the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. There's one thing that I know for sure, that we are changing, and we are rising from glory to glory. And a day will come when we will become fit to carry this banner of the kingdom across the nations. And in that day we will not be small. The least among us will be as mighty as David. Hallelujah. It's always challenging when you are through the period of training. There is no comfort about training. You are built, you are equipped, you are trained, you are pruned. But when God is done with you, he will present you as a masterpiece. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've been thinking for a while, and um, what I want to talk about tonight is a very serious issue. And... Um, I think that it has plagued the body of Christ for too long and I trust that God will grant us grace. It's not a teaching we can exhaust tonight. Wherever we stop, we'll stop and pray. Hallelujah. When I began my walk with God, I knew from the first time, volume Mike, that There was a difference between just being a nominal Christian, Sunday to Sunday Christian, Bible study Christian, and one who has a passion, a desire, and a resolve to seek the Lord and to pursue him with everything. I saw what looked like Christianity, but I was not satisfied. And I knew that there had to be more. And I began to explore. I read the books of great men like Watchman Nee. I read materials of people like Peter Tan. I read the books of Kenneth Hagin. I studied God's generals, revivals. In a bit to find out that spiritual ingredient that is responsible for a life of fire. For a life that is not cold at all. Hallelujah. And I discovered a few things. And I'll be sharing some of them. With us tonight. Hallelujah. In my opinion. I think that. The. The greatest disaster. That can happen to. A man. Is not. Um, it's not sickness. In fact, it's not even demonic oppression. As bad as these things are. I think that, in my opinion, the greatest disaster that can happen to a man is that you walk in error or you do not press through spiritual things to attain the full stature of that which can be available for you in the spirit. I once heard the story, I think it's a popular story in the Christian faith, about a man who boarded a ship and part of that ship there was a package for his meal. Have you heard that story? And the man was more than grateful to get into the ship. And for days... He was scrounging the little um, food that he held. And his table was vacant. And when he was almost dying, he was told that there had been provision 
for more. This is how it is with many believers. We do not know that there can be more, that our Christian experience can become richer, that we can become a lot spiritual than we are. And, and that which I seek to teach tonight will help us to understand this so that we do not just get born again and stand at the gate of the kingdom and not press deeper. Hallelujah. Now, according to scriptures, please write, the Bible reveals to us, spiritually speaking, that there are three categories of people, three types of man, as far as it has to do with our walk with God. The Bible reveals to us clearly that at any given point in time, you will find three kinds of people. Number one is what the Bible calls the natural man. The natural man. Number two, the Bible calls this second kind of man the carnal man. The carnal man. Number three, he calls the third kind of man the spiritual man. And this is very interesting. Please follow me. So the Bible tells us that when God is speaking through the word, he's speaking to three kinds of people. There are words that are directed to natural people. There are words that are directed to carnal people. There are words that are directed to spiritual people. And I believe that one of the challenges in the body of Christ is that we have not been accurately taught what I call the path of spiritual progress. The transitions from the natural man, the exact spiritual requirement that it takes for you to leave the realm of a natural man to the next phase. And that when you are in that second phase, Many of us have not been taught exactly the spiritual pathway that transforms men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Hallelujah. And I truly am convinced that part of the reason why many believers are not strong in the spirit and cannot do much for the kingdom is because they have not been taught the spiritual pathway that transits men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Now, it's very sad that we don't agree over many things in the body of Christ. And we just thank God for his grace and his faithfulness. I think that one of the things that we all agree over in the body of Christ is the condition being born again if you confess jesus christ you confess you believe that god raised him from the dead you are saved every sect every denomination believes that and there is no argument about that the moment that you satisfy that condition you are accepted across every denomination but after that we almost don't agree on anything again and so there has been confusion through the years as to the exact path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. And tonight, the teaching is an attempt to bring us into that understanding. I truly believe that this holds the key to our deeper and our richer work with God. I read a book by a man who was acclaimed to be the 21st century prophet, a man called A.W. Tozer, The Pursuit of God. Powerful book. These were men whose dimensions of spiritual understanding was amazing. I have read many books. I have been built by so many people in the body of Christ. But there are certain people that their teachings and their spiritual paradigm has left a mark upon my life that will never be erased. 
their understanding about God is so accurate. When you study their writings, you know that these people encountered God. Hallelujah. There are so many books in the body of Christ attempting to answer different questions about the pursuit of God. And the challenge is that, you see, when hunger meets error, it becomes a very unfortunate thing in the spirit. There are many believers who are hungry. We come to God, we come to church, and we say, I am thirsty. Lord, reveal more. You see, when you are hungry, you are like a baby whose mouth is open. Anything that can fill you, you will take it and swallow it sincerely. Hallelujah. And many of us, that's the journey that begun the error that we have come into. We, have, we delved into it sincerely. When we got born again, there were probably no good Christian groups and fellowships around us to build us accurately. And so everything that looked like light, we ran to it and we poured our lives to receive it. And that little that we had is what we are holding on to today. But the unfortunate part is that some of what we received is not the accurate truth. So I sincerely pray from the depths of my heart that God will open our eyes so that our spiritual progress will be accurate and that at the end of our journey we will not have regrets as to why we did not attain the full stature of being spiritual men. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so we have learned a lot of things. And um, I have seen that there is a cancer that is eating believers up. And that cancer in one word is called the flesh. It's a cancer that has been responsible for the downfall of many mighty men. Please open your heart tonight because the Lord is going to talk to you very seriously. Hallelujah. Everyone say the flesh. We are going to examine what is this spiritual cancer that is able to impede people and stop them from becoming spiritual. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me true and true till my heart becomes a home for you. If you know the song, just sing it one more time. Come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i search me through and through till my heart becomes a home First Corinthians 2 from verse 14. Verse 14. In fact, let's start from verse 13. First Corinthians 2, let's start from verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, that man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14. Everyone read. One to read. Stop. So the Bible tells us there is a man called what? The natural man. 
But the natural man cannot receive what? The things of the spirit. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Are you following me now? So, this is the first kind of man the Bible seeks to explain to us. He is called the natural man. And the Bible gives us certain traits. It doesn't leave us in confusion to guess who that man is. It says the natural man is one who has not yet sustained the capacity to understand spiritual things. They are foolishness unto him. He cannot know them. Because he has not been quickened to discern spiritual things. In one word, the natural man is one who has not met Jesus Christ. The natural man is what we call the unbeliever. I don't want to use that word because there are Christians that are still unbelievers. Hallelujah. So the natural man is one who has not met the Lord Jesus Christ. He has not come to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the way. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. So the natural man is one who has not truly had the encounter of regeneration. The word regeneration comes from the word regene. To record you again. Regene. It's a new encoding. A changing of your spiritual configuration. Hallelujah. That's the first kind of man. And the Bible says for those kinds of people. There is nothing spiritual that ever makes sense to them. Hallelujah. They consider the faith work foolishness. They consider every spiritual activity foolishness. Some of us were like that before Christ found us. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth of Zion. Hallelujah. Everything that was of God was, an, was a thing of mockery. We laughed at spiritual things. This man has an eternal destiny. The name of the place is Hellfire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if this man has been in church all his life, even if his father is a pastor, even if they baptized him in water, for as long as he has not met Jesus Christ, he is going to hell. If he dies. Is there any confusion about that? So that we can move forward. Any confusion? The natural man has an eternal destiny. He is going first to hell. And will later be relocated to the lake of fire. Hallelujah. That means if you are here. And you have not met Jesus Christ. I wish it were a lie. But it's true. You are going to hell. If you don't repent there is no other way to say it I'm, I'm very sorry i would have said you will go to a place that is not nice it would have been a nice way but let me tell you the truth and take me seriously the bible says this 
I am the way. I am the truth. Can we get back to the basics of Christianity? I am the life. Not your pastor. Not your prophet. Not anointing oil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Placing an anointing oil on you does not make you a Christian. Soaking you in water, in baptism, does not make you a Christian. I, I, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because we need to redefine the condition for true salvation. A prophet of God speaking a word over you to say your sins are forgiven does not take you to heaven. Hello? I want all of us to get to heaven. So I want us to probe so that if you belong to this category and your conviction about your being saved is because of some of these things I'm saying. Let's clean up the air so that you will know. There is what we call, they used to teach us in Sunday school called assurance of salvation. Did they teach you? Not salvation. Assurance of salvation. That you can know that if the trumpet sounds today, by the way, there is a real trumpet and it will sound. Let's be careful as we progress spiritually and we seek to edit some of these things out. I hear men of God who speak and say there's nothing like the book of life. You know that statement? Write my name in the book of life. Yeah, forget it. There's nothing like that. <laughs> we will know one day but I can tell you there is a book of life. The Bible says books were opened and another book, a master book was opened and the name of that book, it didn't leave us to any theological guessing. It said the name of that book is the book of life and whosoever's name, pastor, apostle, koinonia member, prayer band member, revivalist, whosoever's name, was not found in that book. The Bible tells you that you are cast into the lake of fire. It's as simple as that. What's that man's song? Is your name in the book of life? Serious question. Is your name? Sing it. Is my name? See, let me tell you, you know, there are many believers who think that your confidence is equal to salvation. I won't go to hell. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you are not saved, brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a name for you. The Bible calls you what? The natural man. This is not my message. I'm just digressing to press it in. So that you will know and you will care. Brothers and sisters, I know that we have been taught not to scare people with the revelation of judgment. That there is judgment day. Don't scare people. So that their coming to Christ will not be out of fear. But the only issue is that it is true. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one word, not one word will fail. I really want us to truly, truly, before we even progress, examine our salvation. The Bible says to examine ourselves so that you are sure that if Jesus comes today, he will make heaven. If you know right now that if the trumpet sounds, you are going to heaven, Stand up. If you are not sure, no problem. I'm serious. We are not playing games in this place. Please, you know that we are very serious. If you are sure that if the trumpet sounds right now, right now as we speak, you are going, you know we can fake it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That if the trumpet sounds now, right now, together, we are going to be with Jesus Christ in the air. 
That is one of the greatest assurance. You are sure you are going to graduate. But that is inferior to your eternal destiny. You are sure you are going to get married. You are sure you are going to be healed. You are sure you are going to be delivered. But brothers and you are even sure you will be successful. But can I be sincere with you? If you are not sure of your salvation, it's time to deal with it. And I'm going to talk to you. I will tell you what the condition to make heaven is. Please and please, I owe you that responsibility under God. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Keep standing. I am alive. That was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so in the course of ministering. I have had the privilege to stand before people a few minutes before they die. I have had the privilege to comfort families that have been bereaved. Some families of members here. Some families around that I'm connected to. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hold the phone and hear families cry as their loved ones pass on. I've had the opportunity to look at people for the last time. I've had advanced knowledge where God told me this person is not going to make it. He's going to die. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If you've never thought about this thing this year, I want you to think about it for one minute. Jesus Christ is truly coming back. Please, in case you have been told that it will not happen, let me guarantee you there is an event that is going to happen in this earth. And every prophecy, every single prophecy that needs to, be, to come to pass for the coming of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously. Every prophecy. There are people who have had visions of the coming of Christ. There are people who have had visions. I'm just reminding you that there is more to this life. This physical life that you see. And as you walk up and down your daily activity, if you are not sure that if Jesus Christ comes, we will be caught up. Let me tell you how it will happen. Please sit down. Everybody open your Bible. First Thessalonians, please. Paul had a revelation of what is going to happen and I'm going to show you. First Thessalonians 4. We are talking about the natural man. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. The natural man should know. First Thessalonians 4. From verse 13. 4 verse 13. Please let's hurry up so that we can beat time. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Everyone look up. It's projected. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. That means part of the revelations of the kingdom Paul wants us to have is the knowledge about how the coming of Christ is going to be. Brethren, so he's speaking to believers, concerning them which are asleep, that's those who have died, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Paul is not speaking his opinion. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. 
that which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means the day that Jesus Christ is going to come, there will still be people who will be alive in the earth. Are you getting me? Not everyone is going to have died as in gone to the grave. So he's giving us, Paul is painting a picture on how the rapture will be. Verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself, for who? The owner of the earth, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Now, which of the archangels we are not told exactly. But the Bible tells us Paul was speaking that on that day Jesus himself will descend from the heaven of heavens and will come upon this very physical earth. And it says there will be a shout the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. That means a trumpet is going to sound. A shofar will blow. And the first thing that will happen in that great ceremony is that the dead in everybody say it, dead in one more time. So it's not only those who are alive in Christ. A man can also be dead in Christ. That he served God with his whole life. And he believed and accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ. I bring you a message of hope. For those of you who have lost loved ones. Brothers and sisters. If they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a name for them. The Bible says they are dead but in Christ. That means a day will come. There will be a glorious reunion. Hallelujah. So the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall do what? We shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Let me explain to you what will happen. All of this that you see will happen in split seconds. Hallelujah. Split seconds of earth's time. It will be faster than the speed of light. There will be that sound. There's no time I would have shown you that unbelievers are not going to hear that sound. Because he, Jesus gave us a revelation. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you didn't hear it, it was not for you. It's as simple as that. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> the Bible says two people will be lying down. Two roommates in Ribadu will be lying down. And one will be taken and leave the stubborn roommate who is not paying attention to the things of God and thinks I don't care. You get up and say, ah, ah, where did my roommate go to? We have checked out of this earth. A day is coming. The greatest catastrophe that has happened to the earth is not all of the tsunami and the disappearance. Imagine how many pilots are going to go. You think they will stay? Once you hear that sound, you are leaving. The sound does something to your spirit, man. At once, all the graves... That was the revelation that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. People who have been maimed, Jews that were killed by Adolf Hitler, bones that have been scattered, Matthias that were beheaded at once. That sound, that sound will do a quickening. The same way Christ was raised from the dead, the Holy Ghost will demonstrate his sovereignty at its best to resurrect every man who is dead in Christ within a split second. And they will rise up with glorified bodies. 
Watch this. And that time, some of us who are alive, I pray that it happens during koinonia. While we are seated, maybe we are worshipping. All of a sudden, I will leave my Bible for you. My phone. Hallelujah. We will leave the drums, keyboard. There will still be a few people seated. And they wonder what is happening. Those who laugh at us right now. And laugh at our fanatism for the kingdom. And think that life is all about money. And cars. And houses. Huh? And marriage. And will not give priority to spiritual things. I am not telling you a fairy tale. We are closer to the coming of Christ right now than before Koinonia started. And it's a very good news. If it's a bad news for you, you are the natural man. It is not supposed to be a bad news. When people die, we write transition. Say transition. So we who are alive, all of a sudden, this body that is limited, suddenly, immortality is perfected upon this body. We will no longer carry this material. The clothes that we will wear will no longer be removed. There will be robes. They are called garments of praise. They are garments in the spirit. And we will join the king of kings. His feet is not going to touch the earth. He will stand in, he will come with his own cloud, his own realm. Mm. And all of a sudden, you will see your grandfather. You will see all the missionaries that were wounded in Nigeria. The ones who were killed in Calabar. The ones that were killed in different crises. We see all kinds of things. And together we will arise. And for the first time, you will look at the earth from heaven's perspective. And truly see that it is shadow. Every time we are on the air. I have the privilege to look down. And you see houses. Like you know how children. Make toys. Whereas somebody will say. I must build this thing. If not I won't trust you. From heaven's perspective. People steal. So that they can build that little object. And you see people moving like ants. That is from, from a view in the sky. Imagine how God looks at everyone. And he says, if I don't build this house, oh Lord, you wait. And he's saying, are you not wise? Have you not heard that there are mansions in heaven? It was not a prophetic statement. There are real mansions. There are people who have gone there. There are mansions. There are mansions. We will be caught up. We will leave all the countries. They will elect themselves. They will fight themselves. There will be a lot of vacancy. ABU Senate. No more admission. Some of your lecturers will come for lecture that morning. Only to find out that CNN. Will carry the most shocking news. Ever seen in human history. This day will put it new Nigeria, punch this nation, massive disappearance of people. All of a sudden, it will occur to those you preach to who laughed at you that this, this person said this. By the time they are saying it, we will wave this earth goodbye. I look forward to that time. It's a very good experience. Do you know what it means? That you are relieved from this body of sorrow. No thinking about all of these kinds of things. It's making some of you afraid. Because preachers have run away from it. Because they are not sure they are going to heaven. Don't talk about it. We are already going. We must talk about it. You talk about your house. 
You are hoping for break or strike or something so that you will run home. This world is not my own. Remember that country music. Powerful songs. Right now we dodge them. We sing all kinds of songs. I must make it. God is holding my hand and I must make it. These are the kinds of songs we write. Nothing at all that reminds us that we are living this realm. This is already a message. For someone, this is your, this is your word from the Lord tonight. That you should sit down and think about your life. I can stand as a preacher and deceive men. But on that day, all of a sudden you will see bishops and pastors still in the earth. And the members will say, Pastor, he say, please don't. The Bible will once again become the bestseller. Because everybody, whether you believe in Christ or not, it will no longer be an instrument of devotion. It will be the roadmap for the next level of prophecy. Every church on earth will be jam-packed. At that point, every business will close their shop by force. When there is nobody you must, whether you are selling tire, whether you are an iron bender, whatever you are doing, you will pack up your business and run to church. And everybody will sit in church hoping that that is the place where the rapture will happen, whereas it has happened. All of a sudden, within 24 hours, a strange man will appear on your TV. And you say, world, calm down. It's true that some people have gone, but let there be peace. And the Bible calls him the Antichrist. Not an Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. At that point, the Bible says, men will run and beg the mountain to fall on them. You are afraid of bicycle hitting your leg. But the Bible says even death will run away. Death will say, I've tried. That's it. Mission accomplished. Yes, read your Bible. Men will run to the mountain. People will carry knives to kill themselves and will not die. The Bible says the, in Revelation, I thought we'll be able to do it this year, but we may do it. We may not be able to do it this year. Eschatology, there is a whole teaching on it. A four-part series on the end time. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you, am I boring you? <laughs> you better say no because this cannot be boring when your eternal destiny is tied to it. Some of us, this is a revelation. God has been talking to you. Calm down with the issue of wanting to make it and think about your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Churches will still be full. There will still be men of God doing live telecasts, whereas the rapture has happened. Some will even be making altar calls. I mean what I'm saying, and I'm very serious about it. Yet there are some people, some quiet mothers, who have been praying, like Anna, the prophetess, looking forward to the consolation. When that happens... Some of the cleaners in our churches who we have disrespected. Before you know it, they will leave the rag for you there and leave. Some of the house helps we have ill-treated, they will go and leave all of us. The door of CBN will be wide open to go and pack all the money. All the security people, the banks will be there. The bulk room will be open. Go and pack. And then you will hear that there is a new technology for buying and selling the Antichrist will introduce a new code of conduct. Joshua Selman! For where? He has gone. And I will turn there and I'll see Lawrence. I'll say, You made it. Oh, I pray that you will turn and see your father, your mother. And you say, Where is my sister? And there will be joy. No matter how antisocial you are, there must be joy. Because you will turn and see someone and you will suddenly turn and see the person who led you to Christ but has died. And you will look at him. And we will all be young. No competition of I'm fine, you are not. We will all be fine. Leave this body with all the deficiencies that this realm brought for us. 
and will arise in a glorified body. Question. Will your father be there? Will your mother be there? Yes, you may be there. There are people in my life, I'm sorry to say it, I know they will not be there. Based on the truth of God's word, they died without Jesus Christ. Some of them, we had the privilege to talk to them. And they didn't take it seriously. And they died. There are people you spoke to. They didn't know that you were so close. And they didn't listen. And they died. With my mouth will I make it known. That's why we have to preach. From the rising of the sun. Right on till it's going down. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. There will be churches that more than half of the congregation will be dancing and singing praise and worship. And they are not gone. Because they never took seriously the issue of salvation. They thought it's a basic thing. There will even be men of God sharing revelations. And all of a sudden they will find out that the earth looks empty. The weight of the earth will reduce because people have left. Revelation says that there was 30 minute silence in heaven. You know why? The, the shock in heaven because of the seven vials that was about to be poured upon the earth. The Bible says one third of the vegetation of the earth will be destroyed. You were taught about ecosystems, right, in biology. Imagine what happens to the earth when one third of the vegetation is destroyed. It's not a prophetic statement. It will happen. No buying indomie until the mark of the beast is there. No nothing. No matter how you hide. We have GPS. What do they call it? GPRS. GPS, they will find you. No hiding. The question I want to ask you right now, again, is, are you going to make it? This is not to scare you. What then is the condition to make heaven? What condition transits you from being a sinner To being a righteous person in Christ. Romans chapter 8. Sorry, chapter 10. I'll begin to read from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here's the condition. That if thou shalt what? Confess. Not assume, confess, verbalize with your mouth the lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, that means it is possible to confess what you do not believe. Is that true? So, you must first believe in your heart that this is true. Jesus came and died. He shed his blood for my sins. He was given as a propitiation, as an exchange. What I could not do for myself. Jesus came as the ransom, the lamb that shed his blood for my sins. He said, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, what is the, the result? Thou shalt be saved. Next verse. 
For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Has this happened to you? I know you have spoken, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe in you, I believe in you. I believe you died, I believe you died. And you are pinching people all around. The Bible says, do you believe in your heart? Was it a sincere statement? Do you truly believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that he shed his blood? He took your place in death. That you may take his place in life. Do you believe. That he defeated sin. He defeated Satan. He broke the power of sin. Do you believe that he offers you new life. And if you believe it. Have you acknowledged it. If you have not done that. If Jesus comes today. You are going to hellfire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So before we continue, I'm going to give us five minutes. And I'd like us to pray from the depth of your heart, every one of us, and say, Lord, I commit myself. Commit myself. I want to be sure that on this day, this decision is true in my life. Jesus, Son of God. Pray. I believe in you. I believe in you. I call you my Messiah, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Pray from the depths of your heart. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus. Son of God, I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in life and in death. This becomes my conviction. Jesus, Son of God. I may not believe many things about the Christian faith, but I believe this one. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. With my heart, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Jesus paid the price. I believe the truth of God's word. I believe that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe, I believe that he suffered. I believe that he went to the cross. I believe he hung on that cross for me. I believe that he was pierced with those nails for my sins. I believe he said it is finished. I believe he was buried and he went to hell and collected the keys of death hell and the grave i believe that on the third day he resurrected i believe that he's alive today and he offers me the gift of righteousness oh and i've received it by faith jesus son of god important decision in your life when the road is called up yonder 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 When the road is called up yonder, when the road, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. 
in two minutes i like you to cry for your family members that you know you know they are going to hell lift your voice and pray don't pretend it some of us our kind fathers are still going to hell when all is said and done when all is said and done your degree means nothing your prosperity means nothing when all is said and done when all is said and done there are some of our sisters going to hell brothers our relatives kind cousins well-meaning family members but as it is right now the truth of god's word is that they are going to hell pray for them lord save them save them save them hell is real heaven is real whether you believe it or not jesus is coming please pray for them in one minute i know we've taken time but this is too important what then are we doing save their soul oh god save their soul please pray for your father lord let him not go to hell now that he's alive there is still a chance pray for your drunkard brother lord you have to do something about his salvation pray for your idol worshiping grandparents lord they are kind they love me but they are going to hell save them oh god are you praying let me tell you if this is all we do tonight it is important there is nothing that stops jesus christ from coming this night the gospel of the kingdom is already being preached there is nothing that stops jesus christ from coming tomorrow morning hallelujah the last prayer point before we continue listen look at me i want to say something and i mean it from the depths of my heart there are some of you here the blood of your family members and your friends will be upon your head because you move around you know jesus and you love him but you are afraid and ashamed you don't want stigmatization how can me a fine girl be involved in preaching how can me a bubble all right they are going to die that's the problem it has nothing with you being a preacher and let me tell you the bible tells us that the rich man was in hell and he saw lazarus they communicated you will be able to see your father and your mother they will look at you you will look at your roommates you will look at people you will see them let me tell you the truth and they are going to ask you they will say Femi you saw this thing you didn't insist you even asked me out yet you never preached to me you taught me about prosperity you taught me many of us who are preachers here the blood of many people will be upon our heads we taught about dimensions of revival we taught about divine health Rema, we heal the sick. There were all kinds of demonstrations of the spirit. But they, we did not confirm whether our members are going to make it. We had building projects. Project 10,000. Excellence. There was table. You cut cake. We dress well in suit. But the question is, in the final analysis, 
are you preaching to anybody there are some of you you have never opened your mouth to talk to anybody you can share about revelation you can share about marriage you can give koinonia messages you're on facebook you're on twitter you have all kinds of things god gave you an opportunity you have recharge card let me tell you something in 2000 and was it three or four i used to do something i will never sleep until i send text messages to at least 10 or 15 people talking to them about the lord jesus christ i don't know them i would just be calling numbers at random i think that was when 2003 four that was when they started this gsm thing i would just type in numbers at random and send just type a message about salvation not a condemning message but a sincere message there are some of you you can make tracks you are waiting until the day you become a Jew. some of us our facebook pages have become platforms for for gossiping and making all kinds of noise yet our loved ones are going to hell you are interested in a relationship with the lady you don't even know whether she's going to heaven or hell. All you know is she's fine. Continue. Hallelujah. And you are there. God gave you beauty. All kinds of guys are coming. You don't want to fall your hand. And you never talk to them about Jesus Christ. Some of you get up and you allow people. You come for coin on You just say, I'm going. And they say, okay. And it never occurs to you that if you come for coin on and the trumpet sounds, you will never see them again. You have no ministry if souls are not being saved. You are not doing ministry. I don't care what you are doing. Our number one assignment is part of our mission statement. Massive salvation of souls not salvation of souls massive salvation of souls when i see a man that needs to hear about jesus and god grants me the grace i will speak if i cannot speak i will do something what is wrong with you going to the studio i'm going to pay 10 or twenty thousand naira and just do a salvation message you are not the name of any ministry. You say, what is the name of my own ministry? Must you have a ministry? Just go to the studio and do it a 20 minutes presentation of salvation. Or you and your friends contribute two, 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 two thousand. Five or ten people. And just put it as an mp3. We put all kinds of useless things. Um, this is Joshua Selman. I'm about to release my debut track, Nonsense, when there is room to preach the gospel first. How many of our gospel songs carry direct salvation messages? Have you, seen, have you discovered the way we are quietly deviating and nobody wants to attack the salvation thing? It looks old school, right? It doesn't look very attractive. So i rather push success. I'm not against success, brothers and sisters. But I repeat, if Jesus comes, nobody is carrying a khaki out of this realm. Are you, are, are, you, are you aware of that? You are not going to carry any shirt. All of these things, you will drop it behind. Whatever you have in your account is useless. You won't carry your awards. You won't carry your degree. You won't carry your marriage certificate. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what drives me every day. I have dedicated my life, not just for ministry, to turn the hearts of many to righteousness. I don't care how much I'm misunderstood. I don't care how old school I sound when Jesus comes in the final analysis. Some of you are fellowship escorts. Some of you are pastors. When was the last time you truly preached do you know that we graduate people from Bible school and they don't know what the gospel is? They know the keys to wealth. They understand marriage counseling, conflict resolution. 
how to raise money for church. But they know nothing about winning souls. One more time before I continue. I've, this thing has touched my heart. This thing has touched my heart. Because this is the core. The pivot. The pivot. Of our Christian experience. If God makes you a millionaire. And nobody is getting saved as a result of your millions. You will eat your money the day the church is raptured. If God gives you a platform. You have your small fellowship, your group, and you just feel we are only five. I think everybody is born again. Don't make assumptions. That's why I respect Papa E.E. Adeboye. If he holds a meeting between him and his wife, I'm sure he will still make an altar call. No assumption. No assumption. We preach powerful messages. And at the end of it, we don't care whether people are saved or not. One more time. Put a fire in my spirit. Let my mouth not be silent as far as preaching the gospel. Telling people that Jesus died for them and that there is judgment if they don't pay attention. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Some of you truly, when you started out with God, you were very serious as far as soul winning is concerned. You didn't even know that there was anything called anointing. But now you know that there is anointing. I will use everything that God has given me for the gospel. Pray. Prosperity. Grace. The knowledge of graphics, my knowledge of media, my beauty. Sister, pray. Tired of taking men to hell. Now I need to begin to take men to heaven. I will use my voice to sing. And I will keep singing until people come to Jesus Christ. Many of you need to repent on behalf of your groups and ministries. Open your mouth and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You've been doing a lot of activities, but they are not channeled towards soul winning. And you don't care. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, my small fellowship in the village have not been preaching the gospel. I've been preaching many things. Not the gospel of salvation. Every other gospel is only useless or useful when the gospel of salvation has been preached. Some of us have little groups that we preach to occasionally. Where did you throw your evangelism zeal? It looked old school and you've thrown it for something new. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. Please pray. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold I'm crying out light the fire again I need your simply I'm crying out light the fire again I just feel God wants us to stop here and press on this issue tonight. Carnal believers and the rest, we have to go we'll take on that one. Hallelujah. Whether you are going to kneel down or lie down in the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to write the names of five people that were going to intercede for their salvation. If this is what we do tonight, go ahead and pray. Please cry to God. 
They must be saved. The natural man. I'm crying now. Write it. There is no man that Jesus cannot save. For as long as there is life, there is hope. Where is all about you? It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. Please write it down. All about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, it's all about you, Jesus, Jesus. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray in tongues like your life depends on it and say, Lord, these five people must be saved. I must see them in heaven. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Whether you want to kneel down, cry, whatever it is, let there be a cry. They must be born again. Rabakata preske pete gede balararabash. Raka posho to pekete le prekete le koto supa. My father will not go to hell. My father will not go to hell. My mother will not go to hell. Pray. Save my husband. Save my wife. Pray. When the trumpet sounds, I must see them in heaven. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They must be saved. They may be non Christians, but I travel. They must be saved. Yeah, 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 Revelations 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord is imparting a genuine passion for souls. Yeah. Revelations 20. From verse 10. Revelations 20, verse 10. 
Listen. Listen. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever. Next verse. And I saw a great white throne. I saw it. I saw it. And he that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place found for them. Verse 12. I don't know what gospel you have been heard, you have been preaching. I saw the dead, small and great, commissioners and houseboys, presidents and bike men, first class students. And those who did not pass jam, I saw them. I saw them. They stood before God. Every man must stand before God. And the books were open. What books? Your faithfulness in evangelism. Your giving. For those who have taught you that your works of righteousness are not important. Here goes the Bible. The works of men will be tried by fire. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Brothers and sisters, read the remaining part by yourself. One to read. And the dead were judged out of. That means there are things that are written. According to what? Next verse. And the sea gave up all the people who died by sea crash. And death and hell delivered all our uncles and aunties and politicians. It says, and they were judged, every man according to their works. 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible says, this is the second death. Let me show you something. Is there another verse? Go ahead. Verse 15. Everyone read. And hold on. And what? Whosoever at that point, your status will not matter again. At that point, your English, your ordination will not matter. Your suit will not bail you out. He said, whosoever was not found, written in the book of life, there was no story, end of discussion, cast into the lake of fire. Whether it is your father, whether it is your mother, some of you, if you don't pray, you will watch your mother who gave birth to you. You will watch her, as the Bible says, depart from me. And you will watch them cry to hell. Some of you will watch your uncles. Lift your voice and cry. And say, Lord, whatever it will take to stop them from going to this place of torment, I cry tonight. Hey, hey, hey. I love them too much I love my mother I love my father I love my brothers yeah. Whosoever's name was not found in the book of life be it a president, be it a governor. Whether you are a first class student, two one student, it will not matter again. It won't matter how many parishes you have. It won't matter how many rema you have. 
Whether you are a member of Koinonia or not, is irrelevant. I will stand for myself. You will stand for yourself. And I saw books open, and another book was open. Intercede for them, Lord. Send angels, send angels to my house. Send angels, give them dreams, give them encounters with Jesus in their dreams. They must be born again. When all is said and done When all is said and done This is all that will matter yeah. Revelations 21 Verse 3 a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God verse 4 and God finally brothers and sisters a day will come when all is said and done in this life God will wipe away the tears the tears of mockery some people died out of cancer some died out of hiv some were martyred they were standing for jesus while they were killed the bible says on that day that tears the tears of mockery holy holy the lord will wipe that tears the tears of the pain that you have to go through on account of the gospel that men will not like you some of you would have been married since if you were not standing for God. But because of your faith, the Bible says God will wipe that tears and there shall be no more death, no more obituary, no more pain, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Listen. Listen. It's not enough that you are convinced that you will make heaven. I'm still saying it. We are going to pray. There are some of our loved ones, some of us come from backgrounds that are non-Christians. And some of our loved ones are still there. You are going to pray. And everyone will pray too. Give them divine visitations. Encounters with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if Jesus came to die, an encounter is not too much. To force any man to give his life to Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Encounters. Appear to them in visions. 
like Saul on his way to Damascus. Lord, they will not die. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Rakata pakata badosh. Pray. Change my father. Change my mother. Some of them vowed that they will never give their hearts to the Lord. I like you to pray. It can change. Some of them are traditional worshippers. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Read your prayer request. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Claim their salvation in the name of Jesus. Some of them are religious people. The truth is they are not born again. They are not born again. Some of them belong to sects that will take them to hell. Occultic sects. Pray for them. Give them an encounter. Hallelujah. hallelujah I'll never forget one of our sisters she was a member of the worship team hallelujah I will never forget her touching testimony came from a completely non-christian background and she decided to give her life to Christ when she gave her life to Christ it was war and gradually gradually the lord started doing his thing in the family the brother gave his life to christ and then i think the mother and he was remaining the father and this lady would not give up i will never forget that night when she called me crying and jumping around chapel and said can you imagine my father my father gave his life to christ she was jumping see there are some hardened people you see. You know that humanly speaking, they will never be born again. Don't try the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of how you were. Some of you think of what God brought you out of. Then you will know that there is no man that God cannot change. There is no man. God has changed occultists. God has changed hardened criminals. Some of you, you know where God brought you out from. If God could change you, if God could change you, we are still going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because some of you, it's just, you don't know what to say. But we are going to cry. Lord, let no one's blood be upon my head on that day. Put your word in my mouth. And grant me the boldness to declare the gospel. Go ahead and pray. your word in my mouth pray deliver me from shame deliver me from my ego deliver me from embarrassment hey
Are you praying from the depths of your heart? You must start with your family members before you think of crusades and outreaches. Start with your family members. They must be born again. They must be born again. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are many avenues. Many avenues to turn the hearts of men to righteousness. Number one. The ministry of intercession. There are some of you who pray a lot. But all you are praying is, Oh God, give me tea. God, give me bread. Add brew ban on the bread. That's, that's all our prayer. If, if, listen, if the scope of your Christian experience, there's, we'll do it another day. I really wanted to talk about the carnal man. And then we'll, there, there are scriptures that I prepare to touch. We can't, we can't do that. Our time is already gone. The slave to the flesh. That is the man of the flesh that can really not please God. That is another dimension. Maybe we'll consider that next week. Hallelujah. That you, you, you write the names of people and you just go into fasting for one day and it's not for yourself. How many of you have ever done that? To fast and it's not for yourself. If it's not for me, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. If it's not for my marriage, my, my lifting, my prosperity, or that you go to prayer and say, Lord, you must save these souls. And you are not just pretending it. One thing that I know is that as much as God grants me grace and bread, no one's blood will be upon my head that day. No one will look at me and say, Joshua Selman, you had access to me, but you never spoke to me about Jesus. Do you know, listen, do you know what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said? They said, let his blood be on our head. Who taught them that principle? That the blood of a man can be upon the head of another. And that God would look and say, Ken, I gave you access. I gave you graces. And you ended up building an empire. MOG. They invited you to travel around the world. They gave you water, ushers around. And you never, you were not concerned about the souls of men. There are men who will carry the blood of others on their head. Hallelujah. Oh, I must preach. Necessity is laid upon me. Some of us, the only reason why we cannot, I'm not talking of condemning people, but I'm talking of being passionate enough to trust God. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. There are some of you, you have never invited anybody to church, not once, the way you are like this. You don't care. It's not an issue at all. Yet we sing and we say, Lord, I love you. Yet we sing and we say, someday I'm going home. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. The Bible says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. When Jesus came, he gave his assignment a business-like attitude. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Hallelujah. We just came back from a trip. And when I came, I couldn't even rest just to do everything and to come here. Now, why all of this thing? 
Our flight was delayed. There were so many things. These guys have been tired. We left Benin Republic this morning by 5 a.m. in the morning. Headed to the airport, our flight was shifted. And I can justify and say, Kite, God, you too, you know. But Paul said the love. He said, I, Paul, a bond servant. It looks like I'm in slavery, but no one is forcing me. There is love that constrains me. Little inconveniences for some of us. Little inconveniences for the kingdom. And we complain. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against comfort. But I'm telling you, if it is because you want to be comfortable that you allow souls to die and you don't make spiritual progress, their blood will be on your head. Tomorrow morning we're up teaching school of ministry students from there. We're headed to Zamfara. Coming back Monday morning straight into the counseling session. Why am I doing all this? Am I stupid or I don't know where a retreat center is? That I can just go and lie down and say, let me rest. What drives you, my brothers and my sisters? Please don't say you are in ministry. No. What is it that when you get up in the morning, truly, please take seriously what I'm saying. What drives you? What drives you? Power or fame? What drives your Christian experience? There are some of you, those around you, it's not like they are hardened. Nobody has preached to them. They've been coming to church. You know they are not born again. You know they are not born again. Religion is not being born again. If they are not saved, they are not saved. Period. It's time to talk to them and tell them, I, I want to talk to you. Is it too much to pay and invite them to a restaurant and talk to them about Jesus Christ? Can your 500 naira not go for the gospel? Will it kill you? Will it kill you? What is wrong with three or four of you coming? And just praying for three days. Just praying and fasting. No group, no ministry, no nothing. Just to pray for souls genuinely. Ask people to submit the names of their unsaved ones. And pray. After three days, that's all. Jesus said, if you do this to the least of my brethren. See, let me tell you. The day Jesus comes, we are going to be surprised. Because those you think are the greatest in the kingdom. You will be shocked to find out that they are not the greatest. Some of us, the men of God that you think will be the greatest, you will be surprised that some of us will have just barely made heaven. Whereas there are people whose entire life, they don't have revelation, they don't have any rema, nobody's inviting them for any ministration, but their heart in life and in death has been committed towards the gospel. There are classmates of ours that have never heard about Jesus Christ. We are ashamed. Sometimes when I pass through ABU campus, I look at the campus and I nod my head. Things have changed. Things have changed. The fire. Many of us are afraid to talk to people about Jesus. Okay, agree that you cannot go for all the crusades and the rest. What of your family members? You grew up knowing your father drinking and smoking and bowing to a God. Have you ever said, Daddy, there's something I want to discuss with you. Say, my father that I know, as if you don't know the Holy Spirit too. What if I talk to him and he insults me? Is that the reason why you will not talk? What if I talk to him and he stops giving me uh, pocket money? What if I tell the brother that this relationship is not born again and let me talk to him about Jesus Christ. Won't it cost me the relationship? I want to marry. Okay. Marry. There are some of us as you are looking at me right now. Even those you are in a relationship with are unbelievers. They are going to hell. You don't care. Who is he? He's a nice guy. Is he born again? Eh, 
please, everybody is a sinner. If he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Your priority is not love. Your priority is salvation. Please hear what I'm saying. Because on that day, the Lord is going to ask you. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point. Lord, whatever I can do at this level, to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom and soul winning, reveal it to me. Whatever I can do, if you can't preach, you can sow seeds. Please pray. Everybody must do something. What can I do for my family? Do I need to organize a get together? Do I need to celebrate my father's birthday for him so that he will be saved? What can I do at this level? Do I need to buy a card? Do I need to write an article for my family members? Do I need to produce tracts? What can I do at this level? Don't say I cannot do anything. With the grace you have, there's something you can do. Please pray. Lord, you gave me a voice. I can sing with it. You gave me wisdom. I can use that as a platform. Lord, you bless me with finances. I can release my wealth for the kingdom. Lord, you gave me a car. My car can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a Babin saloon. It can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a restaurant. It can be used for the kingdom. Reveal to me what I can do at this level it may not be much but let me contribute there's something i can do i can pray i can preach i can finance the kingdom Hallelujah. Listen to me. I can go on my knees and beg you. Don't make this just an emotional thing. It's easy to just feel emotional and just say, wow, because I spoke about hellfire and rapture and books. It's easy for you to be threatened and then just carry the euphoria for one or two days and it dies back. Take this as a message God is giving you. No matter what you have done in ministry, if souls are not being saved, you are wasting God's time. Hallelujah. Please rise up and lift. If you wrote your prayer, your request, if it's in a book, just lift it up. I want to pray on it. Listen. You are the first agent that will follow up these people. Don't just pray for an anonymous man of God to evolve from anywhere. You are the man of God that God is authorizing tonight to start. Don't fear their faces. I'm not saying you should go and do stupid things without zeal. Or with zeal and without knowledge. Just jump into people's houses and inconvenience them. Start with your family members. Your family members will not kill you. At least you can start from there. Father, 
we repent in any way we have trivialized the issue of soul winning and Lord we know that this is in your heart and you decided to move us this direction we want your heartbeat to become our heartbeat we want your cry to become our cry we want your passion to become our passion put a piece of your desire for souls in our hearts and let it be a fire that nothing in this life can quench oh we desire you we desire you put that passion lord i stretch my hands towards these names there are so many people who are going to hell whose names are written some of them are fathers some are mothers lord in the name of jesus we agree as a family of faith that beginning from tonight let there be strange angelic visitations strange angelic visitation force them to go for crusades may they go for meetings may they encounter men and women of god and lord we pray especially for those who are not of the christian faith lord you know that humanly speaking their minds are made up but in the name of jesus christ i pray angelic visitations encounters of jesus christ as they sleep they will see his face as they sleep they will see his face in the name of jesus christ as they sleep they will see the cross they will see the cross it will follow them everywhere they go we ransom their souls from the pit of hell lord we will not stand in heaven and watch our loved ones enter that wide gate of hell we will stand and we will rejoice put a passion in us to win souls let it not just be a religious evangelical thing lord remind us that if we do not win these souls and we let them die that their blood will be upon our heads i pray for everyone i kill timidity from your life whatever makes you ashamed of the gospel i don't care what it is whether your inability to communicate well your poor background complex that you have about yourself that 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 limitation is swallowed up tonight in the name of jesus may my god give you utterance may my god give you utterance may my god give you confidence in the name of jesus christ and i pray that you will not win souls and miss heaven yourself i pray for everyone that the same way we are gathered in the earth like this that is how we will see ourselves on that day we will see ourselves and know ourselves therefore i pray any manner of life represented here listen to me any manner of life that the devil is deceiving anyone into and making it look like it does not matter tonight that power of sin is broken over your life every association every wrong thing that can jeopardize your eternal destiny in the name of jesus christ receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil receive no to receive grace to say no to wicked and ungodly relationships receive grace to cut away from people who do not love god nor value his ways in the name of jesus christ and where you need to stand alone receive courage to stand alone where they mock you and say all kinds of things i release grace for you to still stand i pray for you from the depths of my heart that every weight every habit 
every attitude you know that can destroy your Christian experience and rob you of the opportunity. I don't care what it is and how long it has been. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that that life of pretense dies tonight. And I pray for those of you who have been doing things both great and small for the kingdom. Grace to continue. I pray specifically for all the workers in this house. I want you to know that your contributions to advancing the kingdom, the worship department, the ushers, one day you will see this record in heaven and the Lord will say, this is what you did on earth for my kingdom. And for those of us who are not serious with the house of God, not the things of God, we are just careless. There is no kind of commitment that you have you don't give for in the house of God. You don't pray. You don't support the cause of the kingdom. I pray tonight that God will speak to you. Yeah. And that for the first time for some of us, you will say enough of lukewarm Christianity. It's time to plunge in and commit myself truly. In the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you who have been wounded on account of the gospel, you have been misunderstood on account of the gospel. I pray for you there is a bomb in Gilead. There are some of us who have been persecuted because of the gospel. You have been blackmailed because of your Christian integrity. I speak to you, do not give up. A day of reward is coming. There is one who is called the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You are suffering financially today. If only you compromise on your Christian integrity, that man would have given you money. Now the money is not there, but he's telling you on you. I want you to know that the Lord is proud of you. He is watching. A day of reward and recompense is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Beauty that makes this whole earth adore you. Home spent with you. We'll just sing this song once. Here I am to here I am to buy. One more time. Here I am. for you tonight is to live with eternity in view whatever you need to do to remind yourself I want you to remind yourself life does not end here life do, I want this is the message to you the personal word of the Lord to you that there is more live your life knowing that you will give account of it don't live your life as if you own your, yourself. Live your life as you joke, as you play, huh? as you go around your normal activity. Remind yourself that a day is coming when all that we see today will be no more. Let it not scare you, but it serves as a buffer solution. It will check balance excesses in your life and it will keep you 
hot for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for tonight. You took us in a way and a dimension that we did not even expect. But Lord, we thank you because this has produced fire in us. I truly believe that from this message, habits and all kinds of things have died a natural death. You will walk back and find out that the things you could not resist, all of a sudden, there is grace for you. A revelation has imparted grace. All of a sudden, things you could not say no to, you will find out that you can look it at the face and now say no. Some of us, many of us, was one of the things that I wanted to talk about. The rate at which pornography and masturbation. Just give me a minute. Let me talk about these two things. I know that uh, we're out of time. The rate at... No, no, no. Keep standing. We're rounding up already. The rate at which these things are eating up believers. We'll talk on that when we talk on the canal. Not exactly on these things, but I just feel in my personal experience as I talk with people, I found out that these things are about the biggest demons. They are, they are eating up pastors, reverends, apostles, teachers, prophets, well-meaning Christians. There are probably many of us here right now, you are looking at me. It's not like you are bad people. It's not like you don't love God. I don't know how that spirit just came upon the body of Christ. It must be attacked back to hell. Masturbation and pornography, these two things, they go hand in hand. Believe me, you come into a congregation and you'll be surprised at least 60 to 65 percent of that congregation. And it's not, I know I've counseled married men and women who are still involved in pornography and masturbation. You would be thinking marriage will solve the problem. But it didn't solve it. That to tell you it's a spirit. <laughs> Listen. I said it when I was teaching the school of ministry students. We are here to help you. Don't go to hell for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, the devil has deceived you. If you open up with people, you, you really think your situation is the first? I've had men of God, pastors, some colleagues in ministry come to me to say, look, you've got to help me. And for you, if people come to you, it's not an, a situation to start running and say, can you imagine? Even so, so, so person came and met me. And I also want to advise you, be careful who you meet for counsel. Huh? So that you don't just take yourself innocently and say, I'm suffering from pornography or masturbation. And the man of God says, ah, this is what I've been waiting for. And then he now takes the advantage. I've spoken with a lot of ladies who have gone to meet men of God. Telling them, look, I'm suffering with lust. I can't see men and resist them. And then at the end of the discussion, in the final analysis, the man is adding, adding to the iniquity again. If you're a man of God here, listen to me. And members come to you for counseling. And you end up sleeping with them or doing anything. Stop it. You are going to hell. If you, the Bible says, He that causes every one of these to fall. Masturbation and pornography, two devils. We are going to pray just in one minute. Is that all right if we pray? Please. I'd like you to challenge. You see, the truth is, we are all scattered here. But everyone were the ones who know. I'm not condemning you. It is the truth. Many of us have quoted everything. We have fasted. We have prayed. People come to me and they cry and they tell me, man of God. It was even in the period of fasting. I was fasting three days in the period of the fasting. It's because you need help. Hallelujah. We're going to lift our voice. We're going to say, Lord, we banish this spirit. First from our lives and from koinonia and from the body of Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Take it seriously. 
cursed this spirit to devils that are destroying the body of Christ destroying pastors destroying men of God pray we curse the spirit of pornography we challenge it we challenge it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we declare that we are the sanctified we are holy kept set apart we are the vessels in that great house that are unto honor pray I challenge that spirit of masturbation of pornography you are a devil from the pit of hell you will not steal away the destiny of the church pray for yourself pray for this great house pray for the body of Christ we break the power in the name of Jesus we break the power we break the power of sin we break the power of iniquity we break the power hallelujah hallelujah listen let me say this if you like say that i'm doing whatever you have all kinds of junk pictures or or whatever it is on your phone all of these seductive images go and delete it are you hearing what i'm saying delete it break all of those vicinities into pieces match them by yourself and kick them out if you want to see the glory of god in your life authentic glory there is a price don't let anybody fool you there is a price and by the grace of god everything that you will hear will be within the context of the kingdom and within the balance that will make your life holistic are we together now so you will be taught as always that your love for god will be the ultimate you cannot afford to tie your work with god to money and car and prosperity and marriage and child and whatsoever no 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 it will make your christian experience fake are we together now however it is god's desire for you to have a consolation in your christian experience say amen, amen. i've taught us again and again that materialism is not having materials there are poor people who are materialistic absolutely materialism has nothing to do with materials materialism is the influence of the flesh the influence of things around when they occupy the place of god don't be mistaken that when you see somebody come out of a jeep or somebody wears a designer clothes that person is materialistic far from it in fact let me tell you sincerely most wealthy people conquered money to be wealthy in the first place are we together now so god wants your success and my success say amen, amen. but Paul began to give us one key to the success principles of the spirit. And he says, finally, brethren, let me talk about your thought life. Paul, in many scriptures and the psalmist and Jesus himself, begins to tell us that in our quest to become all that God has destined for us, we must pay attention to our minds. We must pay attention to our thought life our convictions and the things that we think about have a lot to do with the manifestation of our reality and again and again the word keeps challenging us to order our thoughts aright are we together now so the bible begins to tell us that if you want to succeed in life your thoughts must be cultured they must be governed i've taught us again and again that your life 
revolves around your most dominant thoughts this is very very true that your life becomes eventually a reflection of your convictions right and and so in in psalm 19 let's look at psalm 19 verse 14 the psalmist puts it in a very interesting way two keys that are responsible for our success in life two keys that are responsible psalm 19 verse 14 i, I believe yes it should be psalm 19 verse 14 let's turn there thank you jesus psalm 19 verse 14 let's read it together one to read let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength and my redeemer the psalmist tells us to be successful there are two things that are very important number one is the meditations the contemplation the content of your heart and heart there is interchanged in many places in scripture with mind are we together now the meditations of your heart that lead to the words of your mouth can decide your destiny this is very very important hallelujah now um many people have not been taught that their mentality their mindsets their ideologies are largely responsible for the quality of their life there are people who pray all the time and and, and now there is a place for you know taking charge of spiritual forces that attempt to cause people to fail and so on and so forth but we must realize that not everything about a man's failure is tied to devils and witches and wizards and so on and so forth there are many of us who do not have the kind of mental state that will afford the holy spirit but in us the things that will create a glorious destiny hallelujah and so paul is teaching us that whatsoever things he's giving us spiritual parameters that govern our thought life because i tell you this sincerely there is no man that wins the olympic by mistake there's no such thing as success by mistake it doesn't happen hallelujah so it must be intentional and we must upgrade our mindset you can um make make reference to our teaching on pulling down strongholds right that message will bless you because a man is entirely a summation of his mindset and ideology and i told us how that our ideologies are principally formed from our cultures is that true our cultural background we come from different areas with different ideologies about god about success about marriage about life about victory about failure etc when we come to god we don't come so that he will add to those faulty mindsets we open up our spirits and we ask him to edit that anything that is not consistent with the pattern of the christ must live even if it is culturally correct is god speaking to us now so many of us are victims of culture we have held on to age-long stumbling blocks that will never afford us the opportunity to taste of kingdom success we hold on to these things we cherish them so much and the devil keeps taking advantage of them and destroying our lives but we must choose to lay them down in the name of jesus christ i told us also that our mindset are formed as a result of our levels of exposure the reality you do not know exists you cannot open up your heart to take it is that true and so the word of god exposes us to the possibilities that exist so that by faith we can open up ourselves and tap into those possibilities our mindsets are also framed from our past and for many of us our past are not good experiences but we have allowed it to become part of the walls in our minds that make us feel we are failures there are many of us seated here who believe that we really cannot do much and so that limitation that has come from our repeated failures of the past creates stumbling blocks and stop us from becoming all that god has destined take seriously what i'm sharing with you because your life is at the mercy of these truths hallelujah are we together let the words of my mouth 
Let the contemplations and the meditations of my heart be such that it is acceptable unto you. Let it be such that it's consistent with your ways. If you must live in the kingdom, you must subscribe to God's way of doing things. See, the word of God is not an opinion. A believer is not just one who believes the word of God. A believer is one who submits to the word of God. You submit to it ultimately, regardless of what you feel about it. Are we together now? If I can change your mindset, then you can prosper. I guarantee you. I don't care what the limitation is right now. But if you refuse to allow your mindset to be changed, then there is nothing that can be done to you. A man's limitation is primarily his mindset. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace from God for a change of mindset, a change of ideology. Hallelujah. This was the limitation of Abraham. For a long time, God wanted to do great things through his life, but his limitation became a stumbling block. And one time God called him out and said, Abraham, I want to expand your mind attempt to count the stars and he kept trying and failing and you know he gave up and god said this is how your seed will be finally abraham believed god and the bible says he was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah it's very very important for us to understand um your thought life listen your thought life is a mechanism for creating things in your physical environment your mind is like a machine it's a spiritual component that is locked up in you that is responsible for creation i need you to understand this this is the principle of creation many people have been taught that creation is just about speaking no it's not about speaking alone there are two components that must coexist for creation to happen listen Every time you speak what is not consistent with your mind, every time you speak what is not consistent with that which is locked up in your spirit, you just wasted your time. Believe me. Even for salvation, the Bible says, with the heart, man believes. And on the strength of that conviction, with the mouth, confession is made, and it will lead to salvation. Are we together now? So in that same way, the first key to succeeding is your conviction within that internal work that coming to a point where your thought life is completely governed by the word of god we call that state having the mind of christ the mind of christ is not just a mind that is spiritual the mind of christ is the mind that has been adjusted to think entirely from god's perspective so your viewpoint is consistent with the word of god Hallelujah. We have not been taught the consequences of thinking evil. We have not been taught the consequences of having a faulty mindset. Listen, your mind and your thought life will eventually create what you are thinking. Believe me on this when I tell you. Believe me. Eventually. And so Satan destroys our lives not just by bringing physical tragedies. But because for many of us, our minds have not been fortified by the word of God. We have not embraced the spirit of God enough to produce that kind of alignment and adjustment. We allow all kinds of thoughts. That's why the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. In other words, this battle is not in the flesh realm. It says, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Then it says, casting down every imagination comes from the word Yetzar. Creative thoughts that are planted by Satan. Because if it is in your mind and it becomes an obsession, it must manifest. It is not if, it is when. Listen, whatever stays in your mind long enough, I guarantee you, no power in existence will stop it from manifesting. Genesis 11. Genesis 11. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. I believe in you. 
Let's read. This was a strange man called Nimrod Kush. Hallelujah. That the Bible says they, are, they were attempting to build a city. Look at, please, whether it is spiritual or physical is audacious. Let's just, let's, let's take it from there. Are we, uh, there are all kinds of schools of thought, whether it was physical or spiritual. That's not really the most important thing. The fact that it was a conception in the heart of man to build a tower. Listen to how men think. Go to, come, let us build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us by it make a name for ourselves. According to them, they did not see any impossibility. Not impossibility of raw materials, not impossibility of workforce, not impossibility of anything. Let's see what happened. Verse 4. Verse 4. And they said, Come, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth. Are you ready? Now watch this. This was Nimrod proposing the idea. Are we together? He was proposing the idea because he knew that if the people begin to think, if they can get to a point where that mental picture is in them, the same way is in him, nothing will stop them. Verse 5. It says, And the Lord came down to see the tower which the children of men did what? Look at it. Not the tower that they are building. In God's mind, they have finished it. Look at this. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> Nimrod says, look guys, come together. Let us build a city. We want something to manifest physically. But we know that this is, everything is truly possible. So I want to do something to your mindset. Do you guys believe we are able? And they said yes. And God was watching. The moment they agreed, God said the house was finished. He came down to see what they had built. Can you imagine that? That a man had come to a point of persuasion where his thought life has agreed with the word of God. Right? And then the Bible tells us that it will be manifested. Listen, listen. Do you know that God had to scatter them for that plan to fail? God did not sit in heaven and say, look, don't worry, these guys are just silly people. He literally had to bring confusion to their languages so that they no longer would reason with one another. Every business empire you see today, every successful ministry, every impactful believer who has been mightily used by God. Listen, when God comes to you, when he calls you, the second assignment is not to use you. When he calls you, listen, he equips you. And part of that equipment is he has to make you get to a point where your mind resonates with his own. And then he can send you anywhere. When he called Moses... He said, Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses said, huh, I, I know Ramesses. Who do I tell them I sent me? And he said, you are calling for a revelation. I am that I am. I want to show you a bit of the possibilities that are in me. And when he showed Moses, he said, on the strength of this mental picture, go. Your life is at the mercy of your thought. First and foremost. Your mind, your thought life. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing ideas. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing creativity. This is the spiritual gateway for manifestation. This happens with the anointing and every other thing. Listen, if you ever will raise a dead, you must have conviction enough to stand before one. Are we together now? When a man walks to a sick body and looks at the sick body, you are seeing that this guy has cancer. Are we together? They are showing you a medical report. Terminal case of cancer. Yet you have the gods to overlook that report. Because there is a higher reality. Your mind has been programmed to see something higher and better. Are we together now? You pray for someone on a wheelchair. 
your physical eyes is seeing limbs that are not i mean these limbs even if he's well he can't stand because he's just skin bones and you have the audacity to hold his hands and say stand up listen sit down sir thank you your life is a reflection of the excellency of your mindset that's why all things are not possible for everybody the bible never said all things are possible for everybody it says to him that believes your first assignment is not to look for money to prosper believe me your first assignment is not to look for a job or a business idea please believe me on this your first assignment is not to run around looking for helpers. Your first assignment is to stay and rise to a point where your mindset, where you are obsessed with the possibilities, where the word of God literally is like your mirror. The same way when you look at a mirror, you see yourself. Are we together now? The Bible says as we behold him, we are changed. There is a transition. There is a transition. The workers, listen, none of you signed any form that you will come for Koinonia this evening. Did you sign any form? But the workers came as early as maybe six, seven, eight, and they started dressing everything. The worship team was preparing. You know why? Because something has happened to them. There is an understanding. They know that God will draw his people to himself and bless them. Imagine if they sat down and said, let's watch. If we see people come, are we together now? I mean, who told the people that there will be an overflow outside? Don't say it's because it has been happening. There was a first day. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The oil was at the mercy of the vessel. The oil was not small. The vessel was small. So the oil, the vessel made the oil look small. Are we together? The prophet said, go and enlarge your capacity. Borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. Enlarge your capacity. The moment there were vessels, the oil started multiplying. I learned this early in life. I've studied Jesus Christ and I've studied very successful people. Every successful person in life, every person that has been used mightily by God, first and foremost got to a point where they were convicted that the ability of the Spirit can work in and through them. Are we together now? Everyone, every single one of them. It took them time, but they stayed until they got to a point where their construction was unwavering. So you hear Job speaking things like, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He says, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. In other words, he knew his change would come. When David was in the cave of Adullam, he knew that inevitably he was meant for the palace. Listen, listen. The devil stands helpless in the face of a man who has made the word of god his mentality at that point satan becomes powerless truly in your life because you are no longer governed by the circumstances and the things that your optical eye sees your convictions are higher than your physical perceptions so you know that god is able now the question is satan has surrounded or the issue is satan has surrounded our lives listen he has surrounded our lives with things that compel us to think in a certain way this is what cosmos is all about babylon the this godless system satan has created structures around our environment they are called mind control systems from the movies are we together now to the way people behave right to spiritual forces that influence men all of them are aimed at bringing people to think in a certain way so by the time a lady watches a movie and she finds out that evil is celebrated in that movie a lady steals a man's money 
and they clap for her as being brave. So the devil gives your mind a new definition of what great means. That whenever you are able to oppress another successfully, you are great. And so you receive it. Are we together now? And then eventually, from morning till night, we walk out in the morning and return to our homes with all kinds of ideologies that are not consistent with the word of God. And what we keep seeing in our lives is a physical manifestation of things we did not bargain for. But you thought about them long enough. That thought life became so powerful that it necessarily made us to start speaking it. Listen, there is a difference between speaking just because you want to talk and you are responding to the overflow of the content in your mind. The Bible says every time your mind is full, you must speak. It's not about whether you want or not. Uh -uh. He said, be ye filled with the spirit. Immediately, he said, you will start speaking. So the moment your mind is full, your mouth will start speaking. Is God helping us? And so we begin to speak. And while we are speaking, we do not know that we are creating. Every time there is a union between your thought life and your words, there must be creation. So we call ourselves names that we have thought about for so long and we have verbalized. And then our lives inevitably become it. Job said this. He said, the things that are feared most have come upon me. He feared many things, but the one he feared most became his reality. Are we together? There were many things he was afraid of, but the most dominant fear became his reality. So if you want to reign in life, you must realize that part of your assignment with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is to come to a point where you think like Christ. I love Jesus. They brought five loaves and two fish. Say, ah, how are we going to feed these people? Jesus said, no, 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 no. Be silent. Don't corrupt my mindset. I know all things are possible. I'm El Shaddai. That you cannot see it does not mean it's, it's not there. And he told them, no. He lifted it and he gave thanks. And he told the people, he said, go and start sharing it. Sir, what about the embarrassment? Go and start sharing it. And the Bible says, as they were going. See that. This is why you find out that certain things happen to people in certain ways. Your father kept calling you stupid from birth. At 11 years, you were behaving helplessly stupid. Now, he thought he was venting anger. He did not know he was creating. Are we together now? They started calling the lady prostitute. You don't stay in your home. You go to somebody's home. And at age 13, 14, she looks back and sees that ah, she's beginning to have a lustful desire for men. Because every time your mind, I'm not just talking of hallucination. When your mind holds on to it like a conviction and your word speaks, it's like a woman and a man meeting together. There must be creation. I never confess things I don't believe because I'm wasting my time. Are we together? I pray that you will find, you will see light in what I'm sharing with you. When you see this, you will know that there is nothing coincidence about a man's destiny. Every man receives the fruit of what he created or allowed others to create for him. Hallelujah. And so every time your physical life is manifesting things that are not consistent with what the word of God says, the key is not to complain. The key is to take your eyes away. The Bible says looking on to Jesus. Not looking on to your circumstances. Not looking on to your situations. Looking on to Jesus. He calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Right from the time we were 10, 20 in this ministry. I already saw a crowd. I preached that way. I behaved that way. My convictions have never increased or decreased with people. 
Because what is in me is stronger than what I see. What you are seeing today is what I spoke yesterday. Tomorrow will tell you what I'm speaking now. Are you getting what I'm saying now? No, 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 no. What you are seeing today is not my mindset of today. <laughs> the physical realm always delays. The realm of the spirit is faster. I've gone ahead of this realm. Because there is the power of creation. You can change any situation in your life. It may take a while, but as far as the heaven is above the earth, you can change it. The first thing is not just to shout and say, God forbid! God forbid is not a confession. It's just an attempt to be human. Are we together now? There are so many people who make all kinds of statements without the conviction to support it. And so there are only statements, no creation. I will never fail me. God forbid. I won't fail. Yet you, you are seeing it right before you. Because you see, what you are saying and what you are thinking are not the same. So there is no creation. Are we together now? There are many pastors who keep speaking and saying, in the name of Jesus, I have this and that and that, but the truth is their convictions are not true. After the church service, when they now sit down in a non-church platform, they start saying the things they really believe. It's like, oh boy, man, the truth is, Kai, it's not easy. Oh. To be a man is not a day's job, truly, truly. That's what they believe. You see that? That's their conviction. It's easy for us to use all kinds of spiritual words on stage thee and thou and you know god is faithful everybody say god is faithful but the truth is whatever is the pivot of your thinking is what will be your expression even when you are alone ah uh, when i'm alone i say the same thing i look at myself and i prophesy and i speak this is not just positive thinking this is kingdom living I, are we together now it's, it's not just positive thinking brothers and sisters Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Creation is still on. That's what makes us God. Co-creators. But we have lost the art of understanding God's technology of creation. It's not just speaking. It's speaking on the strength of a conviction. That's what produces creation. Hallelujah. What is the sum total of your ideology while you are seated here? Many of us believe all kinds of lies that the devil has put in us and paul is saying finally he says i've i've discussed other issues with you but i cannot end this epistle this way finally whatsoever things are true don't think lies what is a lie anything the word of god did not endorse anything at all so your situation currently is a lie as far as the word of god says <clears throat> See, see, the Bible puts it this way. I love the Bible. It inspires me. It says, listen, it says for our light affliction. Imagine the hell you are going through and the Bible calls it light. For our light affliction. <laughs> then it says, which is but for a moment. It costs 10 years a moment. Now it's up to you to choose to believe what the word has said. For our light affliction, which is bought for a moment, it says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Then it says this, why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. How do you see what is unseen? It never said the things that are unreal. It only said they are unseen. That tells you all you see is not all there is. Brothers and sisters, there are microorganisms in this room. You cannot see them. But you keep something, keep kunu, leave it open for four days and see what it will turn into. It reveals to you that there are microorganisms, there are bacteria all around. To be carnally minded is to be governed entirely by your vision. Your, your physical vision. And the devil knows that we are people who walk sensually. 
and so he has taken advantage of our senses to corrupt the reality of this principle you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you get the praise you take the honor you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank you god cannot do much with you if your mind does not authorize him to create realities in your life god wants to find expression in your world he wants to do a lot of great and mighty things but he's dependent on your mindset it's not just speaking you speak on the strength of conviction the world our parents our environment right the mindset in nigeria has made us to think in a certain way to an extent that when you fail right when things are not working in your life rather than staying with god and staying true until there is a manifestation you look for somebody who has failed more than you and you justify it you see an ideology it's supposed to be a solidarity a comfort but it has destroyed us so someone comes with a membership of 20 people and then god shows you that i can do more with you and you say am, am i not better than this guy at least I'm, I'm 20 he's four and by that we guarantee our mediocrity and we remain there never to rise never to rise let me tell you how i think i lock up myself in a room or wherever there is and i pray in tongues i soak myself with worship and i take a journey through the word of god because i don't trust anything else believe me any other thing outside the word of god is a lie now it's difficult to convince you because for us a lie is anything you cannot see, you cannot touch, or anything that is not true based on a reference. Jesus said, I am the way. I am reality. Not just an information that is correct. Truth is not what is correct. Truth is what has life in it. Anything that does not have the life of God in it is not truth. That's why it may be a physical reality that you have a lump a breast lump or a growth on your legs but the word of god tells you listen 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 the word of god tells you that that is an affliction that can leave it opens you up to the possibility that it can leave it's up to you to now dwell on this physical reality and die with it listen when remember in, in the bible remember in the bible that's why your eye your eye is very important in your dominion what you see physically and spiritually remember brothers and sisters the bible teaches us that there was a time listen there was a time when the nation of israel were dying and all of that and all of that serpents and so on and so forth and he told moses to make a serpent and put it up remember and he said if you can just look at it you will be free it matters what you see it matters what you look at you cannot sit down watching all kinds of devilish movies watching all kinds of things exposing yourself to environments that feed your mind wrongly and then you want your life to conform to the word of god it will not happen that way so i surround myself I soak myself with this atmosphere of worship and then I begin to take a journey through the word of God. I read the book of Joshua and I see what God told me that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life and like a camera, that's it. You see that? You see what this camera is doing? That's what your mind does to everything. Your mind snaps everything 
it's up to you to delete every junk in your mind by the word of god your mind is like a camera listen if you check this right now you will see what was captured how many of you look at me how many of you have posed well for a picture you thought you posed well but when you checked what it captured your eyes were closed you would have argued that you didn't close your eyes but at the point of capture that's it that's how our minds are you think you are getting it right but your your reality is telling you something is wrong up there if we are to look at these pictures right now you may think you were standing very cute but you find out that you were even like this sleeping but you can never remember when you did that the camera can remember you see that so you begin to see repeated woes in your life and say when did i do this i go to church every day i pray and your mind says well as far as i'm concerned every time you spoke you spoke things that were not consistent with your mind and the few times you spoke what was consistent with your mind there was creation this is the child Oh, we are failures. It's not for us. This and that and that and that. It's not for people like us. And listen, the, the most, the most, the, the saddest part of this is people who are negative about life. Have you seen people like that? Let me advise you, run away from them quickly. Even if you grew up together, it's time to break away from them. There are people who stand close to you in five minutes. They are saying something negative. It's a devilish attitude. Believe me, if that thing is at work in your life, you need a retreat. Use the weekend. Retreat. Sam, come. Um, is it that, is it that in, in Koinonia, people are allowed to just sleep like that while a message is going on? You see what he's thinking. Are we together now? And then you move around and you are looking at uh, I'm seeing most Pastor Shegu and his wife do Anko. What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> are we together? And then you saw that cake now. You see, they, their minds are negative. They always look for what is not working well. That's why their lives fail. So they try to attract people to themselves who are like them. He said, look, you may be a sincere person, but it must change. There are people like that. They never are optimistic about life. Good morning. What is good about the morning? That's why the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. It didn't say the Lord and Satan. This is the day the Lord made. Like you cook food for somebody. This is the day that the Lord made. He said, let us rejoice. And be glad not complain and be angry listen this is the revelation I have so I come out in the morning and somebody insults me and I remember this is the day the Lord has made my assignment for me to receive what he has made is until I rejoice and I am glad listen listen this looks little but I'm teaching you something the Bible is saying in the realm of the spirit the day has been made because he says he daily loads us with benefit it has not manifested yet there is a condition your condition is rejoice and be glad rejoice and be glad because god made the day satan also made the day there is how you receive what he has made so every time you wake up there are two days in one you choose the day you want to see so i get up in the morning thinking I'm awake. Somebody will be saved because of my life today. Someone will be filled with the Holy Spirit because of my life today. Koinonia is rising higher. And somebody calls you and say, do you know that I'm, I've not eaten anything? And I say, don't worry. Our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. This is, I'm showing you how I'm thinking. Listen, I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm acting here. It has become my construction. It's impossible to entertain any negative thought without a scripture rising as a standard. If I lack explanation for the situation like Job, I will say God is greater. God is greater. Lord, I count you faithful. The reason why your day is always a tragedy is because there is no rejoicing. 
Satan knows that. And so from, it's, it's from your bedmate. Right? Immediately you wake up, you just look and say, why are you looking ugly like this? Say, please don't try me. I'm, 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 I'm angry this morning. I had a, a, a dream that it's not supposed to be. The moment you step down, you find out that there's no light for you to bath. You see, there are orchestrations in your life, but the Bible says rejoice and be glad. It didn't say rejoice because good things are happening. Rejoice as a rule. Rejoice as a key. Are we together now? How many of you wake up and rejoice? In spite of the fact that immediately you rejoice, somebody just sent you a text and said, I've been tolerating you for a long time. I just want you to know that I heard what you said about me. Wallahi, if I did this and that, and you read the text. Listen, listen. It's up to you to allow that thing in your mind and start speaking. And you find out that for one hour you are thinking and resentment is becoming your most dominant thought and you verbalize it. Oh God, punish somebody for me. See, the Bible says, do not say before an angel, I made a mistake because they execute the words of the saints. Are we together? I never allowed, see, you can't be great thinking the way people are thinking. Somebody comes and tells you certain things and say, God bless you. I rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He emphasizes it. He never said rejoice because you are happy. You went to the board and you saw what looked like, um, it didn't look like your destiny and you, you, you just laugh. Not just that you move around and then you stand and say, anybody that tries me will die in this place. They know. creation is happening every day every time unfortunately most of what we are creating in our lives are tragedies and setbacks another aspect to this is anything you do not celebrate in another person you are not authorized to have it in your life oh this is a key in the spirit for as long as I keep talking about Sam, forget about stepping into the worship anointing. I will never. For as long as I trivialize Mike's grace. You see that? Many of us do not have this attitude of genuinely celebrating people. See, see, from this night I'm giving you an assignment. Remove the negativism out of your atmosphere and you'll be amazed to see what will begin to happen in your life. One of the happiest person I've seen in my life is a gentleman called Alex. Not many of you know him. Alex is a very interesting personality. He used to play bass guitar for me before he traveled abroad to study. The only time I saw Alex sick, he said he had malaria. I couldn't believe it because he was laughing. I said, Alex, malaria. No, you are, you are kidding. I've never seen him angry. Believe me, those who know him will tell you. He used to cook. He uses hot pot. He will cook and because I don't eat much, he will just fetch more. And say, Pastor Josh, this is your own. He will just push it and sit down with the pot and eat it. Always laughing. I mean, there was a time we lost one of our sisters years ago. And he stood. Everybody was being remorseful. He was trying to be remorseful. And I laughed. I said, this is not you. You are a joyful person. Those kind of people hardly fall sick, if at all. They are very happy. They don't see no masquerade chasing them in any dream. Because they are happy. They are happy. The praise of God is in their mouth. They are always optimistic. Are, are we together now? Always optimistic. Listen, walk with people like that. They are always optimistic. Every time they see challenges, tell them, don't worry. There's a better day. These are the kinds of people to walk with. Not those who say, let's sit down here, I told you. Next time when I talk, you will listen to me. No, no, don't walk with those kinds of people. There are pastors I will never walk with. They are negative. They are cynical. They are always complaining. Why is ministry not working? Ministry is working. Are we together? 
Never. I will never become a party to those kinds of things. No. God is faithful. The Bible says the path of the just and the just, it shines brighter and brighter. And as a pastor, you have to be careful. Don't carry your bad day and come and land it on your congregation. There are congregations that study the, the pastor. The moment they see the man like this, they know they are in for it. Because now he comes up and see those who are pastors laughing. You may not understand. Sometimes you can really be angry. And those who have annoyed you are there seated. And after singing the praise and worship, you are now looking. And then you say, stand up. And they, they pretend as if they didn't hear it. Did, did I not say, stand? I will curse you now. In this church, you people don't give. You don't honor your leaders. People are suffering. Maybe the guy is broke. Things are not working. He has come on stage. The members are not cooperating. You are not sowing. No prophet offering. No love offering. No seed of honor. The man is frustrated. His wife is telling him, look, let's leave this job. Go and leave this ministry. Go and look for a job. And he carries that anger. And then everybody's in trouble. The drummer is in trouble. The keyboardist is in trouble. Usually it's the worship team that gets to receive the, the lash. You, you know that, right? Let's appreciate the worship team. You don't know what they go through. Really? Then immediately you finish all kinds of... I choose to be positive. It's a choice. I choose to be true. I refuse to meditate on negative things. My life is a blessing. Listen, we're going to pray. I, I just showed us this principle. I will never think on things that are not true. I will never think on things that are not pure. I will never think on things that are not noble. I will, I, no man will preach me into this. No. There's no amount of message. I will not declare my loyalty to anybody who is negative. No. I love you, but carry your trouble and go away with it. I see life only in one direction. Only one direction. The way the word of God says it should be. And no matter what is in my obstacle now, what is in me is bigger than it. It's a matter of time. My physical reality will always, inevitably, oh, that you will believe this. And you will know that that one shoe you have is not all that there is. And you stop feeling negative. You will celebrate that moment because you are waving it goodbye forever. Are we together now? Pressure is a product of a poor perception. This is the reason why many people are under pressure. You are trying to buy a suit of 100,000 or 200,000 now because you are trying to show you are successful. Listen, 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 listen. If you can agree with God up here, Satan is no longer a factor. The only way Satan stops your harvest is to stop your seed time. Once it is sown, it becomes automatic. And the word of God is that seed. You ask the leaders, every time we're having leaders meeting, we don't have time for any sorrowing and mourning. When our sister transited to be with the Lord, we had our time of, uh, you know, just talking, but I challenged them at once. I said, no griefing. Remember my message that night. Why would you preach such a message when people have had certain things? Because her transition is not a tragedy. We know exactly where she is, and whatever it is that the devil orchestrated, we're happy that she's rejoicing. Paul said, for, for me to live is Christ. He says to die. He uses a business language. Gain. Gain. I refuse to be negative. There is nothing any man will do to me. Listen. That will make me sit down. I'm just negative. And say, oh God. Some of you say, oh God, take my life. You will soon die. No, 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 no. no. It's not a negative prophecy. It's a warning. It's a caution. We do it. Oh God, no marriage. No job. Nobody toasting me. Listen, listen, there is an atmosphere around you that is making that happen. You won't agree, but I'm telling you this. There is an atmosphere. I've seen ladies, please um, don't, 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 uh, don't think that I'm using this against any lady. I've seen certain ladies that may not even consider themselves to be as good looking. 
and you see the kind of brothers coming because they are optimistic they know i will marry they talk about their children with confidence and you who stand say children care where is the man and then you find out that they sit down and true to it in your presence five people are calling and say agree for me now i'm ready to marry you and you are there with your negative atmosphere human beings have prophetic atmospheres they can repel or bring things to your life right so a guy wants to say hello to you they say turn around and 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 turn around and say hello to your 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 neighbor and a, a guy walks to you and you carry your anger and bitterness that guy came for koinonia just like you how are you sweetheart sweetheart you don't stop there no. this person that is talking is maybe he's even getting married soon you now carry your anger you create this is why many people don't have friends two weeks and the friends are tired of them because there is an atmosphere that drives every good thing out of your life a negative atmosphere an atmosphere that is 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 from a wrong mindset he said let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable you will never hear me say anything negative about koinonia i'm the number one fan of this ministry i only see what god is doing and i celebrate it you will not see me sit down and be talking about another man of god and i'm telling you pastor alpha do you know that we saw blue flower in his church instead of yellow no never never you must become very kingdom minded and positive i guarantee you if you speak on the strength of that conviction things will change in your life i expect people to bless me every day i'm surprised if they don't bless me i expect it it's not pride it's the truth even this night there are people no 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 no. I, this is my mind you you don't expect anything you are even surprised when it comes you say for me are you sure i'm the one not to give why can't you listen 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 what makes you think you do not deserve it say i deserve the blessings of god shout it i deserve the blessings of god say one more time i deserve the blessings of god i'm not teaching you carnality i'm teaching you how to walk in victory many people always believe is is the chaff that belongs to them if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more brothers and sisters with your heavenly father gave how much more every time you talk to people there are some of you you talk about people and say what's the latest what's the latest mean what is wrong in the person's life now after six months of not meeting the person are we together now what's the latest oh she has a shop so what's the latest it looks like nobody's even going to say i said it i said it I choose to believe the word I choose to allow it become the construction of my mindset Jesus said this verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he also do and greater works brothers and sisters I believe this I don't know who is not working for and I really feel bad for them but as far as I'm concerned this thing is going to work for me there will always be people coming for koinonia lives will keep being changed we will keep rising from glory to glory when people say there is a casting down for us here there is a lifting up it's by the hand of god the anointing of the spirit will never run dry in this house at every point there is increase the word of god will never be scarce it will never lose its place every time you come for koinonia you will keep being blessed that name will keep rising this is my mindset this is what i believe this is how i live in the open and in the secret in my sleep this is what i believe i believe that favor follows me like a shadow everywhere i go even people who do not want me there is something upon me that compels them to bless me i expect it when it happens i said that's right consistent i'm not going to betray my destiny with a negative confession i will not i will not i will not jesus is glorified consistently in my life everywhere i go to minister they receive the touch of god 
I am a blessing. I'm not a liability to any man. I'm not a cost to any man. I choose to believe I am a blessing. Because he said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Are we together? This, are the, this is, is part of the secrets that has preserved and multiplied the anointing of the Spirit upon my life. Don't you think it's just prayer and fasting alone? There is an understanding that keeps the anointing comfortable in me. Nothing in me will choke the anointing out of me because I have learned to create the atmosphere. I have an unction from the and I know. That's why you will keep coming. You will drag yourself from your room by an agency you cannot explain. It's called anakazo. It's at work. It's the compelling power of the spirit supported by a healthy mindset. I will never be a failure in life. Me and poverty are signed up forever. I waved it goodbye, it waved me back. There's no possibility of meeting again. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing Glory to your name. Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, As far as your eyes can see, to you I will give as an inheritance. He said, Abraham, from where thou art, it's okay that you are where you are, but from where you are, he said, Lift up your eyes. From where you are, lift up your eyes and see. Northwards, southward, eastward, westward. He said, as far as your eyes can see. Brothers and sisters, I see far. I see far. Are you seeing your today? Or you are already seeing what God has designed? Listen, if you see it, brothers and sisters, you can carry your 250 naira trouser and move happily. Because what people are seeing is a mirage. They will soon see what is true. The Bible says the things that are on the scene are temporal. Temporal. I see a ministry with prosperity and abundance. I see a ministry touching people all over the globe. I see a ministry winning souls and saving lives. I see a ministry blessing people like, an, like a tree, like an edifice. Kabbalah that's what I see. That's what I see. I see a family of peace. I don't see myself being a wicked father. I don't see myself being an irresponsible father. I choose to be a good man. I, are we together now? It's a choice. This is what I see. I see Koinonia having the best workforce any ministry can have. That's why I celebrate them. That's why I honor them. You will never turn and see me embarrass the people I'm embarrassing myself. I love them and they know it. I'm not embarrassed about my love for them because they are gifted people. And I've created the atmosphere for them to be motivated by love and revelation, not force. Is God speaking to us? You've got to culture your atmosphere. Sister, your, the next level of your life is at the mercy of your mindset. You've got to change it tonight and say, look, the Bible says male and female, he created them. There is somebody who loves me. I may not see the person, but there's somebody who appreciates me. Forget about the one who came and looked at you and said, you think you are fine. Let him carry his trouble and go. But you know what you are looking at. I am a mother who will birth prophets and apostles and preachers. This is the mindset. Are we together now? You look at your academics and it looks like it's nose diving. And you say, I know my redeemer liveth. And people say, let's be real. Be real. You say, this is my reality. I reject that thing you are trying to tell me. My reality is what the word of God says. And I choose to believe it. 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 Ah, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the great of the Lord say so. I choose to say it because I believe it. It says the, the righteousness of faith speaks in this wise. 
on, on the strength of conviction you must speak so we are not just praying blindly oh i know my life is blessed and you just turn and say oh boy we really well let's just continue my life no 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 that's not conviction that's not conviction see in my little work i don't boast of being a general in the knowledge of god but i know something about him he is faithful this attribute of god i can tell you experientially god is faithful god is faithful i've seen his faithfulness that's why i take out time to celebrate him those who put their trust in him never go disappointed i guarantee you if you were disappointed you did not put your trust in him if you really put your trust in him you will watch your way maker step into what looks like there's no way and begin to create ways for you the night time will look like morning will never come but when he arises like a mighty man that he is you will see him move my own is to keep agreeing with him lord i agree with you i may not see where i'm going but i know that with you is a glorious destiny while you are saying it they, they laugh at you no problem they should keep laughing because when it happens they will say he said it i will never be ashamed of speaking the word of god many of us are embarrassed about it so you believe it but you keep quiet you say lord i thank you because you are changing my story and and you now look and they, they laugh at you and they say mr man look let me tell you if i am god i will hear your prayer you that you are praying see when they tell you that kind of thing you feel bad ah i shout it to the mountain top we are going from glory to glory from grace to grace in the name of the lord jesus christ that's what the bible says and that's what i believe that's what i believe let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus the word led there is permit this is a very simple message tonight that is an attempt to challenge us to know that our thought life has a lot to do with our destinies when you come to my place you don't see anything that reminds you of the devil and failure nothing nothing everything reminds me of heaven and greatness i have a little board where i wrote three scriptures one about the anointing one about favor the other one about about increase or greatness and i love it some of us are negative we must change negativism will make you birth things you do not want please believe me pastors our minds must be stayed on what the word of god has said there may not be money in the account of the ministry there may not be this and that but i choose to believe i'm not just confessing blindly but you choose to believe my god is faithful my god is alive hallelujah we are going to pray and when it's time to pray i want us to believe it as you pray you pray away these negative things that we have allowed the devil to put in our minds the bible says, casting down every year there are imaginations that have exalted themselves above the knowledge of the christ you went home this morning and there was no maggi to cook food you went home and there was nothing there was just pepper and you look at it and say this is a mirage my god is faithful what about the welfare i'll be sending to foundations tomorrow i see myself doing it papa oyedeko way before he had the money to buy any designer shouted he said yeah i can never be poor he saw something he saw something to an extent that he was in america and he said god sent him down to come and make the people rich with no evidence on your own part Brothers and sisters, I believe him. I judge him faithful. He has been tested through different dispensations and he has been found faithful. My life is too small to judge the faithfulness of God. From glory to glory You are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me prophesied 
glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for our light affliction which is but for a moment that financial scarcity is for a moment brothers and sisters that sickness is for a moment that limitation is for a moment he said though weeping endures for a night he says joy 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 comes with the morning you are not the first to see carryover on the board if you wore a matriculation gown you will wear a convocation gown oh come on now there is nothing happening to you that is new that's why i said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord that's where you will hear testimonies that are worse than yours and how god delivered people out of it you are not the first to not have food to eat I shared this thing humorously. I'll never forget one, one time in my life, I was so broke, things were so bad, I bought bread. Well, for, for some people, that's prosperity now. I bought bread and then with granite and just choked the thing inside and I was just eating and rejoicing. I'll never forget locking myself and dancing. I was dancing because I saw people blessing my life. I said, the anointing in my life is an endangered species. It's impossible for me to be ignored. It's only a matter of time. When I said that, there was no hope of anybody bringing any seed to Naira to say, take. He is taking you. Sister, you will rise like an edifice. I'm telling you. It's from glory to glory. You are taking me personalize it as we prepare to pray glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory Shout it after me. Say in the name of Jesus. All I see around me is the goodness of God. Is the mercy of God. Is the favor of God. Is the faithfulness of God. All I see around me is increase, glory, beauty, favor. I reject every thought that is not consistent with the word of God I am a blessing lift your voice and begin to prophesy lift your voice and prophesy we cast down by the blood of the eternal covenant every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of the Christ we cast it down we cast down thoughts of failure we cast down thoughts of limitation. We cast down thoughts of inferiority. Oh, hallelujah. We are well favored. The blessed of the Lord. Moving from glory to glory. We think only on things that are pure. Things that are true. Things that are noble. Things that have virtues and praise. I refuse to see challenges. I see the faithfulness of God. I see the mercy of my God. Increase on every side. Honor on every side. Favor on every side. Make sure you are praying inside and outside hallelujah 
say after me in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit I tear down every negative thinking every negative mindset every thinking on failure every thinking on mediocrity everything that makes me look like a nobody I tear it down in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray oh I challenge it challenge cultural mindset challenge the speakings of men over your life and destiny for as a man thinketh so he is for as a man thinketh so he is out of the abundance of your heart of your mind of your spirit your mouth makes proclamations I reject failure. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Listen. He said, We having the spirit of faith, as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. He said, We also, like faithful Abraham, we believe and we prove that we believe by speaking. Are we together? Everything you know the word of God has said for you, you are going to speak it. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Are you ready now? Lift your voice and prophesy. Oh, I'm the head and not the tail. Come on, create realities. Above and not beneath. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. No man is able to stand against me all the days of my life. My path is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I am like a well-watered garden. The smell of my life is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Increase on every side. Favor on every side. Glad tidings on every side. Prophesy. Prophesy. I declare in the name of Jesus. I'm rising from one level of glory to another. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Where I've been deserted so that no man will go through me. I become an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. I'm like a well-watered garden. I am planted in the house of God and I flourish in the courts of my God. In all age, I am fat and flourishing. I'm like a tree that is planted by the riverside that yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Everything I do prospers everything i do prospers there is an unction upon my life that make things to work everything i do prospers he reigns he reigns he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass he reigns he reigns our God is an awesome God he reigns he reigns he reigns he reigns 
by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns, he reigns. Our God is an awesome. One more time. He reigns, he reigns. He reigns. You are standing by. last prayer point listen the bible says even god who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were called those things that be not as though they were called those blessings that be not as though they were called those favors that be not as though they were called those miracles Call it those connections. Call it those destiny helpers that be not as though they were. Call it those new levels that be not as though they were. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. Call them into your life. I call for destiny helpers. Pray. I call for prosperity. I call for increase. I call for favor. Call it forth. By the power of the Holy Ghost. You have an anointing upon you. Call it forth. Call for that miracle ministry. Call for that healing ministry. Call for those new levels of the prophetic. New levels of the apostolic. New levels of increase. Call for that direction. For the new level of life. Call for those ideas. Call for those strategies. For the next level. Call for those connections. hallelujah let's add one more prayer point listen the bible says if thou shall say not if thou shall wish on the strength of your conviction if thou shall say to this mountain not any mountain a specific mountain if thou shall instruct it be lifted from hands and cast into the sea and he says you do not doubt in your heart you will receive you will have i like us to speak there seems to be challenges in different areas of our lives i'm not ignoring their presence i'm only telling you they can change right now open your mouth mention the mountains and tell them the lord rebuke you the lord rebuke you the creator the owner of the heavens and the earth. Go ahead. Migraine headache. The Lord rebuke you. Poverty. The Lord rebuke you. Delay. I say to you. Be lifted. And cast into the sea. Setbacks. The Lord rebuke you. Come on, pray. Speak to that mountain. This favor, the Lord rebuke you. Stagnation, the Lord rebuke you. Barrenness, the Lord rebuke you. Cycles of failure, the Lord rebuke you.
Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. From today, I choose and I decide to be positive. From today, I stop seeing failure. I stop seeing limitations. I stop living a life of mediocrity. From today, I declare that there is an anointing upon my life. There is greatness upon my life. The hand of God is upon me. I'm not ordinary. From today, I declare that no mountain will be able to stand before me. The wisdom of the Spirit is at work in me. Creative ideas are flowing through me. In the name of Jesus. When men say there is a casting down, I declare that there is a lifting up. My story will be from glory to glory. I reject negative reports. I do not receive them. In the name of Jesus. Listen. When this becomes the construction of your mindset, I guarantee you your life will be a wonder to you and to all those around you. They will see an ordinary man, but you will see the results of God. Hallelujah. Before we pray for those who are visiting with us, I'd like us to lift our hands and let me just speak over our lives. Father, you put this word in my heart for your people and I'm praying that every single one of us from tonight give us the grace to reject negativism. As a family of faith, Satan will curse you and all you have to offer. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that every thinking of limitation leaves our life tonight. Every thinking of failure and setback leaves our life tonight. Every thinking of unbelief. Everyone here that is thinking I cannot make it. I declare to you that there is a hand that is holding you. And in partnership with that hand, you are nothing short of a wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. I minister to people who have been victims of their past. Or the scourging tongues of men. People have made pronunciations over your life. And have declared to you that you are good for nothing. In the name that is above all names. We change it by the word of God. We change that report by the word of God. I speak to you. That you will keep recording one level of victory after another. That every challenge that stands before you will become your testimony tomorrow. I say it again. Every challenge that stands before you becomes your testimony. And all those who laugh at you today will laugh with you tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, may our Ebenezer rise for you. The one who can help men. The helper of men. He said, Thus far, God had been our Ebenezer. Let him rise for you in the name of Jesus. Everything that has made you to speak negative over your life, everything that has blocked your eyes from seeing the faithfulness of God, we tear that veil tonight in the name of Jesus. And I declare that from tonight, your convictions will be positive at all times you will rejoice and you will be glad that praise and thanksgiving will never depart from your mouth that you will never have any reason to see life in a negative dimension in the name of jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. 
see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 